Hi, I'm Vanelli. And I'm Abba Shapiro. <laughs> and we're members of the Skylum Education team. And we're here live at WPPI in, in Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Now, you know what? It's like you can almost read my mail. Exactly. <laughs> yes, there we go. <laughs> so, I mean, Abba, you have a great tutorial you're going to show us. It's about night photography. Yeah, well, again, where it's always great. I love I love to come to Vegas just because of the lights. But one of the biggest challenges is the l bright lights are too bright and the shadows tend to be too dark. And so I like to bracket my images. And I'm also lazy and I like to shoot out the window to get that high angle view, but then I don't have to be cold. It was cold here this week. And so what I did is I shot uh, some images and I bracketed three. Now, what first is interesting is the, if you look at this, the length of the exposure of these images. So the darkest one, if I look at that, was a four second exposure. Wow. And, and that, the reason it was so long is because I shot it at ISO 100 because I don't want to get a lot of noise. And I also, you know, kept my aperture fairly close so I had a nice depth of field. So it wouldn't focus on the, the window or the glass, actually on the outside. So the darkest one was four seconds. And as you see, I go through, the, the properly processed one, or the, the mid-range, was 15 seconds, and the, uh, the, the one in the middle was eight seconds. So one was four, one was eight, and one was 15. And that way I can capture some of the highlights from the mountains, and I can also merge this together. Now, I can do a lot in Luminar, and I can really bring out just working with one image. But I really wanted to push this, so I'm going to take advantage of our sister application, which is Aurora HDR, and I can go there directly from inside of Luminar. So what I'm going to do is select all of these images, the three images, holding down the shift key, and once I have them selected, I can simply go to the open in option, and I'm going to say open in Aurora HDR, and it's going to send the three raw files, the three camera raw files, to Aurora, and now I have all the power of merging these together. Now, one of the things I like to do is I always auto-align my images. Now, in this case, I did shoot them on a tripod, so they shouldn't have moved a little bit, but you know, I'm tall tower, maybe the building vibrated. I probably don't need to auto-align this, especially- okay, So by, by clicking like auto-align, it'll just take a little more process. It takes a little more process, and this is great when you do something handheld. And one of the reasons I didn't do this handheld is you notice four seconds, eight seconds, 15 seconds, throwing it on a tripod. So actually, I don't need to auto-align this time. The other choices I have now is I can do ghost reduction, which means if there's movement within the frame, I can choose which frame uh, is the frame that has the clarity, and then it tries to erase the ghost from the other images. Gotcha. I like the idea of a little bit of movement here, especially with long exposures. So I'm going to not turn on ghost reduction. I can bring up uh, color to noise. That means that we'll remove some of the noise in the color area and the shadows. And if I need to, I could check chromatic aberration, which is a situation where you have high contrast between dark and light, or sometimes with some wide angle lenses, you get some aberration on the edges of the lens. In this case, I didn't need to do that, so it'll be less processing. I will use a little color denoise. I'm gonna say create HDR, and it's gonna do all of the calculations, and it's gonna merge these together and take the best of the shadowed areas and the best of the bright areas. Actually, what it does is it analyzes each individual image, finds the best way to process that, then brings them together, and again finds the best way to merge those images. And whether it's one, three, five, nine, you can do whatever you need to for your framing. These I shot with the idea of about uh, exposure. I think the exposure variation was about two, two stops. Wow. So it really pops <laughs> and nothing gets blown out. And this was the before and using the highlights and the shadows, look, I can see these mountains. I can really see detail. If I zoom in, you can see it's really, really nice. It's really sharp here. Let this go ahead and bring in. So I can go ahead, and you know something? Might have been a little bit of movement here. I'm wondering, no, I think nope. that was within. Is this traffic in the background? Yeah, this is the blurring of the traffic. Oh, I love that. So it's really kind of nice. Let's go back and process it. And I'm gonna just go right with one of our looks to start with it. And you know, I can go through and I can do detailed and it's gonna bring out that, but I really want an HDR look here because it's lights, it's not people. So I'm gonna click on HDR, there's the first one, second one, I like this first one. I think it really brings out the colors and it really makes this pop. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and modify this or send it back to Luminar and take advantage of all the powers in Luminar. So all I'm gonna do is click Boss, on the share. We could bounce from Lightroom 
for Aurora, but Aurora, we can go into Luminar if we wanted to. Right. In this case, we started with Luminar. We went to Aurora and we're going to come back. But if I needed to, I could send this back to Lightroom or Photoshop if I want to work with that workflow. So it's very, very flexible. So I'll send this back to Luminar. It will now create, uh, this is working in a 32-bit float space, which means huge color range, 32 bits of color. And then it's going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF file, send it back to Aurora, so I still have that huge range, uh, dynamic range of light and color to work with. And here it is, back in Luminar, and I can go ahead and I can add any filters that I might want. So if I like this, but I really want to work a little bit with the saturation and vibrance, bring saturation down, but the vibrance up, kind of evens out my colors. Because the, the vibrancy is dealing with the muted colors, and the saturation is dealing with the colors in general. Right, so think of it as smart saturation. And I, I absolutely love it. And here, you know, you know, I haven't tried the sky filter on here. The sky filter usually works. I think my sky is pretty good, but let's go ahead and see what happens with the AI sky enhancer. And we bring that up. And it does, it does work the sky a little bit, but the sky was already pretty good. And sometimes I like to just throw on the accent AI filter just to see what it does. Oh, this is great. Look how it just kind of opens that up. <laughs> and now you notice that the sky enhancer actually does come into play. Now, we basically just chimped. Oh, yeah, <laughs> chimping. I love it. Tell me what chimping is so, again. Because so, I know what chimping is, but tell them what chimping is so, again. So, chimping, I'm sure you've seen this many times. You take a photo, you look at the back of your camera, and you go, ooh, 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 ooh. You really like it? That's chimping. You're making the sound, you know, of a chimpanzee. And here I caught myself chimping using our, our looks. <laughs> So this is great. And this is, this is the before when it came back from even Aurora. So Aurora made it great. And then bringing it back into Luminar, I really made this pop. And I really, really like this image. And it came from just that one, you know, if you just try to snap out the window, you wouldn't get all of this dynamic range. But very quickly we could do this. And I really love the and fact that they talked to each other. I'm really amazed that you did this out the window. Because when we were in New York City, we got stuck in Times Square, we were taking photos, and I looked at you and said, oh, man, I'm just not, I'm not feeling the New York City. And then you brought me up on a top. On yeah, the sometimes elevation really makes the difference. Um, and in this case, we have the blur. And one thing I, I do like about this, or one of the tricks I use, and we've talked about this in other, other um, tips thing, is, you know, when I'm shooting this, I turned off all the lights in the room. And sometimes I'll actually, you know, close the curtain with the camera in front of it so that I don't get any reflection. You know, because there's always little lights. So it, it's, it's a nice way to work. And, and I'll tell you, I cheated a little bit here. I set it up, put the curtain. And with a lot of cameras these days, and in this case with this Sony I'm shooting, I can actually control it with my phone. So I was lying in bed, <laughs> changing the, the shutter and <laughs> aperture and, and, and duration of the shot until I got what I want. And then I walked back over and opened and up I the curtain. I think that's when you were texting me, hey, I'm out doing a photo shoot. What are you up to? Yeah. Occasionally you fall asleep, you wake yeah. up, you keep shooting. But... There are some great tips when you're, you know, in any kind of a pretty city. Try to get high up in a room if they have maybe a deck on top or a bar. Sometimes I'll go there. Even a little tripod and just shoot some, uh, some multiple shots with a diversity of exposures. That's incredible. So there wow. we go. There's another tip. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm Vanelli. And I'm Ava Shapiro. And we're part of the Skyrim Education Team. And thanks for watching.